one of the reasons I didn't bother putting GPS on this is because it's mostly used for plowing, cultivating, or uh, seeding. And I can, for the most part, cope with that by, by eye. And also the advantage with seeders is they don't put seed down if there's already seed in the ground unless they're a cultivating seeder unfortunately this is a cultivating seeder so uh, we are wasting a little bit of seed here because OCD farming is what I do. You got two of them or just one, Jingles? Got the other one in my dairy. I've also got a bunch of dashes. But, uh... Those cost gold now, and I'm trying to save my gold. Jingle's opinion is he should be on the war side, but uh, as I said, actually I put him on the gallant first, as it then, because I, I knew I was going to unlock the daring, um, so I trained him up on the gallant, and then um, once I unlock the daring. I uh, moved him across, so I have to work on a new gallant captain. I used to do that a lot with um, my Japanese commanders back when the game started because the only uh, premium Japanese ship I had was the Kamikaze so I would do a lot of commander training using that many of my Japanese commanders used to go through the Kamikaze to uh, qualify on the ship they were working on Primarily because they keep the skills you've already trained them for, you just have to cross train them onto the new ship. And I don't, didn't like spending gold to uh, do the cross training when you could just play the game and train them anyway. But it did make for some interesting gameplay where you're playing a kamikaze with a battleship captain. So no stealth, just lots of brute strength. Lots more uh, premium ships these days. They give them away so frequently, or at least they, they give some really bad ones away so frequently that it's not like uh, they're in any short supply. I did unlock holes in this week as well, so yay for that. Uh, maybe I'll use him on my uh, slow battleships when I get them. What 
he's using on battleships as a general thing. I think Jingles did a video this week where someone was playing a Minnesota and uh, had Halsey on, or oh, Kansas, and had Halsey on him on it. Which can make for some interesting gameplay when the uh, special abilities kick in. Okay, so we're now down to the island. We're going to need to be a little bit more interesting route choices to uh, cover the field. And I think I hit a tree back there on the island, which caused the uh, cedar to jump. So I'm just going to do a loop. Yeah, I did. See the sheen. The morning sun. Stay wide, stay wide. Now, cut back in. I think I'm okay to do a single loop. Don't have to do double. It's good width on this cedar. I can't remember if it's a 9 or a 12. But it did come along at just the right time because I was I was getting really frustrated with the cedars that we have. It's a 12 meter. These are just nine. Nope, those are 12. But I had problems with those. I had problems with um, one I've actually removed from the game. It was uh, an Amazon. Uh, then it was looking like, oh no, I'm going to have to go back to this one again. Uh, so I don't want to use that one. I use that for the entire playthrough on uh, Law Folds. Except for the very first year where I started with the Vader Stat 800, 8 meter cedar. But it was sort of, I don't want to have to go back and use that one constantly because I want a 12 meter cedar. Uh, Convernment DLC came out and it's sort of, ah, good. DLC I believe is out on Tuesday and I will be buying that I'm not sure I'm ever going to play on the Alpine map itself but the equipment that it comes with is incredibly useful for the size of farms I play. The the really small um, loading wagons and I think I'm played out on uh, you know sort of small plows and small uh, cedars and the like cultivators. But small loading wagons definitely are a nice thing to have access to, although they are so pricey. I guess that, yeah, that's the loading wagon mechanism. Once you've paid for that mechanism, the, you know, stepping up in wagon sizes isn't that expensive comparatively 
the problem is is you know the maps that you might be playing on I couldn't get a 75,000 litre loading wagon on this map because it just wouldn't it wouldn't be practical so using something a little bit smaller is a is a definite plus okay and that's good This end and and about there. So it's kind of a toss up whether I was gonna send the solid or the sprayer out. I do have a solid spreader, but it's it's the big supersized one with uh, two axles and big fat wheels, tyres, so uh, it's not practical for spreading fertiliser on uh, growing fields. But, uh, this is the sort of time you'd usually put down solid fertiliser, but I've got two stages of fertiliser already on these fields. So I may just skip to spring and then start spraying once the crops are growing. Just keep the solid fertilizer spreader as a, a lime spreader. Mommy, I'm making a big bubble and me trying to. Okay. We can't do it. It's still got 2,000 liters or 4,000 liters left. Okay, let's spray it away, Dom. Okay. Hi. and got the mail. Okay. Oh, this is working nice. Well. Good thing about canola, it doesn't use a lot of seed. It's a fairly valuable crop, but also it doesn't yield particularly well. Um, potentially you can make more money out of a field of wheat than you can out of a field of canola, just because of the volume of wheat you get compared with the volume of canola. Bill showed me how to make big bubbles, which is really cool. Some farmers think you should do the rows first and then go around the edge at the end. to 11 o'clock. I think I might call this once we've finished planting. I don't have anything else planned and uh, we'll be stepping this up to sort of quick time. <laughs> And just shipping stuff to market, feeding sheep, and uh, 
crashing because of all the snow. Although we crashed a lot today and there wasn't any snow, so uh, yeah, I don't need snow to practice crashing things. It's just you can do it in a bit more style when there is snow. The other thing I could do is buy a weeder. So obviously I'm ploughing these weeds back in, but they're going to grow almost immediately. I could just get a small weeder to uh, it was probably a bad growth last year. Um, but yeah, sorry, I could get a small weeder to uh, pull up the weeds when I get a time to. When I go into herbicide spraying, I tend to do the entire field, but uh, at this point we could pull those weeds quite easily. Just need a tractor set up for it. And I need a weeder. full rows left and then everything else is just filling in the end rows again that's quite a big overlap there so a bit of a wastage of seeds oh we won't be using this again for the rest of the year because the rest of the fields are sugar beets and sunflowers which uses the planter. The planter does not waste seed. I think it wastes uh, um, oh, what is it? The solid fertilizer. Because it lays down fertilizer no matter where the seeding head is but it will only seed where there is no seed already because you have to cultivate the ground first. And I'm cultivating the ground because we're still working on that uh, achievement. And that one's done. So not two rows. close to the end and it's still only 10 o'clock in the morning. The ground's dried out. That's nice. And I'm not using the real mud mod. So we're not going to get the sinking in the fields. I'm going to be removing the DEF uh, mod as soon as we've used up our supplies of DEF. Because frankly it's it has issues. Um, there are more than a few tractors I've discovered that aren't modified to use it, including the class that we have on our uh, farm. So it's kind of a case of why do I want to use this add-on? It makes it more realistic, but you know, if if too much of your uh, farmyard equipment is not set up to use the mod then it just kind of makes it more frustrating because you uh, does this track to use it no oh okay um, also the DEF um, pallets that I bought don't load directly into tractors so I've actually had to unload them into a fuel trailer and as soon as we have used them all up I'll sell the fuel trailer as well so that's another 
hassle. Not very well implemented stuff. Also mean, well, I don't have to buy barrels of diesel here because we have the on the on the yard in yard storage or supply, should I say? It's not storage because you don't know, bring it in and. replenish your supply you uh, you just uh, use and pay for it as you go pay as you go diesel okay so last bit here we still have a lot of seed in this thing I just Tiny bit wider than the cedar. No. Too many overlaps early on in the uh, in the plant. Where is it? Right in front of me. Straight up there, and we are going to call it done. Let's fold that up, put it all away. Now we can clean the tractor. Actually, now I can. Uh, And next time I need a tanker, I will buy one. But, uh, we'll say the uh, we called the guy up, and he came and picked up his uh, his tanker, and we were good now. I'm not even sure I used that tanker for a full hour. Well, there's a lot of scratch paint on the side of it when we kept rolling it over, like driving on over oncoming rear traffic. Okay, so we'll get this old stuff all cleaned off and put away. And I think that's the end of everything we need to do now. Obviously, with while we can spray, um, you kind of want to spray on plants, not on dirt. So we're not going to spray those two fields until they start growing in spring. For right now. for winter. I'm not going to shut the doors though because they uh, are a little bit of a problem sometimes. Hey truck, you should come back and uh, put away. I need to build some sheds down here but again don't have the money for that right now. I do have a shed there that we don't have anything I could you can put the Johnson trailer in their shed. That might work. Maybe we'll do that. Let's try and reverse it straight. See if we can figure out how to do that. There we go. Awesome job for parking here. Yeah, so that's my spreader in there, and it's the big giant two axle thing that's going to kill all your crops if you drive on them. But since the farm's set up on an oilseed radish followed by um, 
if possible, digest eight. I don't need to really worry about many layers of fertilizer. Okay, let's see if I can get this in the first time. So we've got the low load and we've got the baby trailer and then that's it we've just got this small Johnson trailer so I'm gonna leave in animal moving mode for now Okay, I'll go and get the attachments for it. Oh, there's the logging forks. Wow. Shucks. Okay, creels for when we do round bales. Not that we have really done any round bales. I think I used the trailer a couple of times for uh, contract work. Oh. Uh, also the sidebars for logging which we can throw around yay so I'll drop that at the side whoops not what I had planned to the gate post and we'll try not to drive over there. Okay, drop the uh, trailer off and uh, I've just got the logging forks over there. We'll worry about those later. And it's got cleaned off so we can just put it away. I've still got the belt for the uh, store as well. Okay, Challenger is done with. Uh, truck goes with the small tractors. Gonna have to figure out somewhere else to put some of this stuff. Oops. Actually, the truck can go on the uh, the tipper. About that. Beep, beep, beep. And all right, turn the engine off that. So that's our. Uh, of uh, sugar beets that still needs to be loaded a bit more and we'll put the belt from oh, the fence away. I think we've finished uh, doing the oil change on that. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, this tractor doesn't need uh, DEF because it's too old. That one doesn't need it because it's too small. That's good enough, okay. And then we'll run down and put the outro in the store. So that 
is everything done, we will liquid fertilize next spring. I should probably unload these tanks because frankly, yeah. Uh, that's a thing. Um, weeders. Where's weeders? So that's small. My meter, that's 15, that's 12. I could buy that. That allows me to plant oil seed radish, canola, and grass. But we could buy that just for its uh, weeding ability. Or I could look out for some, uh, some small weeders, yeah, three, four meter weeders. But, uh, right now, that's a done thing. Let's go see the doggy. Look at the sun and check on the bale supplies. Lots, many. Four pallets of uh, wool. Okay, there you go, doggy. He's not coming. So how's prices? Actually, I don't want to look at prices there. I want to look at prices here. I believe we have prices, prices, that one. Oats. Yeah, on their way up. Sunflowers. We're gonna need to wait till spring on those. And sugar beets. Are on a climb. Wool, spring, silage. Yeah, we could hold on to that. We're not going to make any more silage before the end of the year, so we could wait for peak pricing. Um, what am I doing? I am checking how much. We have, oh, we've got wheat and oats and sunflowers. No canola. Well, there we go. Where's the sun? The sun is quite high up. But for now, I'm going to call this. Thank you for watching. Um, we'll be back next Saturday when with some more from Oakfield, Oakfield Farm and less noise in the background. When are the but for now, have a good weekend and I'm out of here.